Sustainable Saturdays are a series of sessions where we bring in experts from different area of ecology and environment to discuss various topics related to environment. And today we are excited to host Swaroop Datta, who is a senior project coordinator at Green Yatra. Swaroop with its master degree in botany brings a wealth of knowledge and experience in biodiversity assessment, botanical research, and biotechnological innovations. Today, Swaru will share his insights on biodiversity assessment, exploring its importance and the techniques used to evaluate the health of our ecosystems. So let's welcome Swarup. Over to you, Swarup. Hi, Kritika. Thank you for the introduction. So as Kritika said, today we are discussing about biodiversity assessment. So without wasting further time, let's uh, dive into the presentation and let's discuss uh, what is biodiversity assessment and what is the importance of biodiversity assessment in certain projects that Green Yatra is doing. So biodiversity impact assessment is basically before starting a project in a specific area, we do access the biodiversity of that area, the existing biodiversity of that area, specifically saying, so that we can plan accordingly that our project does not affect the existing biodiversity of that area. And we can plan sustainable solution and we can mitigate the uh, problems or any kind of uh, pollution or any kind of no, uh, noise that are affecting the biodiversity of that area. So when we say about biodiversity assessment, what we actually mean by that? So uh, the biodiversity assessment uh, involves uh, the assessment of faunal diversity, the assessment of floral diversity, microbial diversity, and microfloral diversity. But when we do quick assessment method, we generally assess the faunal diversity and the floral diversity of that region. And if we want to do detailed biodiversity assessment, for that, we have to uh, take consider microbial diversity and microfloral diversity also. So uh, microfloral diversity is basically the diversity of fungi and microbial diversity is basically the diversity of bacteria and other organisms which are microscopic. Now, uh, to do biodiversity assessment, what are the steps? The steps are, uh, first, we will uh, decide what are the sampling methods we will imply in that area. Then we have to collect and identify the species present in that area. Then we have to collect the data and compile the data in suitable format so that we can further access the data and we can do statistical analysis of that data and come to a conclusion. Now, how assessment is being conducted? What are the indices we take? These are the ind indices we mainly take to assess the biodiversity, like frequency, density, abundance, and diversity. So, uh, what is frequency? Frequency is basically, uh, for example, uh, if we are assessing the biodiversity of a lake, now, if a water bird is coming frequently in that lake, then we know that there are some source of food or something else, like uh, the bird is roosting on the ground of uh, the periphery of the lake, or uh, the bird is getting enough food source in the lake, that's why the bird is coming uh, day after day in the same spot. The density is uh, basically the population size of a particular species. Like there are 100 birds coming or 10 birds, uh, only 10 birds are coming in the area, this type of things. The diversity, we know what is the diversity. The diversity is different types of species present in the area. The number of different types of species we can find in the area. The abundance is basically the number of uh, like uh, a bird which is 
coming and dominating the area or not okay yes now uh, let's come to sampling design so here we can see that if we consider that this is our study area like sanjay gandhi national park this is the satellite image of uh, sanjay gandhi national park now these are uh, random plots if i uh, imply random plots in sanjay gandhi national park we have to uh, take uh, these spots randomly we cannot uh, take uh, these spots in any uh, manner we have to take it randomly otherwise our data will be biased okay so if i zoom in uh, one plot here we can see for trees we do 15 meter by 15 meter of quadrant sampling we take 15 meter area and we count the number of trees the number of species present and what is the uh, uh, girth of the trees so that we can access the um, ecosystem density and for shrubs we do 5 meter by 5 meter and for herbs we do 1 meter by 1 meter assessment now what is quadrant sampling for example for herbs we take 1 meter by 1 meter i said that and for trees we take 15 meter by 15 meter for example uh, let's take trees so the, if this is 15 meter by 15 meter plot so inside this plot the trees present we will count them but the trees outside this plot we will not count them this is basically if i uh, explain it simply this is basically quadrant sampling method we take a quadrant and we count the uh, species inside it and that's it we take another quadrant in another location and we count the species on there okay now uh, for animals we cannot do that because animals move one place to another but trees doesn't move that's why we can take quadrant sampling method and we can measure the uh, number of species present or uh, anything like that but for uh, fauna we cannot uh, do specifically quadrant sampling method uh, for some fauna it is possible to do uh, quadrant sampling method but most of the uh, fauna uh, for most of the fauna it is not possible so for that we do mark capture recapture technique this is a very popular technique to to do this uh, first step is capture and mark we capture certain uh, species for example we are uh, doing the assessment of uh, honeybees so we capture the honeybees then we mark the honeybees we captured then we release them into the wild after a period we recapture honeybees from the same area and we check that how many of honeybees has marks which we did uh, in our previous capture and by that we count and compare the number of species present in this area now here we you can see in the image like uh, the total population if i uh, uh, do uh, can you see my pointer prati okay so this is the uh, total population of rats and for n1 this is n1 this is my first capture after a period of time if i do capture rats in the area again this is my second capture and here in n3 you can see that these two rats were captured in the first assessment also and in the second assessment also so these two rats are common in both the capturing period okay and this is the formula uh, to estimate the population size by doing mark capture and recapture technique so i am not going deep uh, into the formula and all i am just showing you otherwise the people will be bored by seeing that now uh, to survey birds what we do uh, there is a popular uh, method named point count method here in the image you can see a person is standing on the point and he will count the birds surrounding himself the number of birds present the number of species present he will count it then he will move into another location and he will do the same process he will stand at a point and he will count and uh, 
measures the number of birds present in the area okay now what is acoustic survey acoustic survey is basically uh, surveying uh, the presence of animals in an area by their sound here you can see we are recognizing birds by their calls like uh, here in the image you can see they generate different kinds of uh, sound waves by this we can identify different types of birds present in the area by their sound now uh, here is the another technique we use is aerial observation now in this technique mainly we consider the uh, a spatial data present in that area and there are other things also like you can see in that on animal sensor we uh, color take certain animals and we track them where they are moving what are their movement pattern where they are uh, getting the food source mostly like that like uh, here you can see remote sensing by satellite imagery this is uh, these are uh, localized sensor platforms for uh, capturing the sound of animals okay so uh, by doing that we can access the baseline biodiversity of that area like what is baseline biodiversity baseline biodiversity is basically the existing biodiversity report we can get in on online before we do on field survey now these are the equipments for flora sampling we need measuring tape we why we need measuring tape we need measuring tape to measure the girth of the Tree. and we need a magnifier to uh, basically identify the species to see the uh, flower properly so that we can identify the tree species we need knife to collect uh, some sample of tree species if, if we cannot identify that on field so that we can identify that after uh, we come from the field and in the lab we can identify by collecting the sample of the species so zip bags we need to collect the sample and range finder range finder is basically uh, we need range finder to uh, identify the height of trees okay this is uh, a laser uh, instrument like it blows laser from it and uh, from the we can identify the height of the trees by uh, pointing the laser on uh, top of the canopy of the tree and on the lower base of the tree and it will tell us what is the uh, height of that specific tree now these are the equipments for uh, fauna sampling we need binoculars to observe birds and animals we need camera to capture for uh, images of birds and animals and we need trap cameras like uh, there are certain animals who uh, comes out in night so we cannot do sampling on night so we uh, place cameras on the pathways in the forest or in uh, the areas where we are doing sampling so that they can capture images of wildlife uh, this is a sound recorder we needed to do our acoustic survey as i discussed earlier now to uh, for choosing sampling sites uh, there are two popular uh, transect method one is line transect and one is point transect so what is line transect line transect is basically we do line transect if we are doing biodiversity assessment in the forest uh, because in a forest the whole forest uh, has the same kind of uh, ecosystem so uh, in line transect method we enter in the forest we uh, move in the forest in a certain direction and we do sampling after 100 meter okay so in uh, for point transit mostly we are doing we do point transit in urban areas because in urban areas there are uh, biodiversity present maybe in a certain place or there are uh, less biodiversity in certain places so what we do we uh, uh, do the spatial survey of the area and in this area we uh, take certain uh, random plots and we do assessment in these areas now uh, for the data we collect there are three types of data we have to collect one is habitat data one is checklist data and one is quadrant data so as i discussed earlier quadrant data we collect on a specific quadrant site uh, for the flora data we mostly take quadrant data 
And what is checklist data? We have to make a list of this uh, of the flora and fauna present in our study area so that we can present in our report that what are the types of birds present, what are the types of plants present, if, if they are endangered, what is the conservation status of this uh, tree or plant or bird or animals, example like that. Now, we have to access the habitat data also because I have, there are, can be different habitat present in our study area. Uh, the habitat can be aquatic, terrestrial, moist deciduous or dry deciduous. So we have to assess that so, so that we can analyze our data properly and prepare our report accordingly. Now uh, for on-field data collection, I personally use this uh, application named uh, GPS Essential. So here you can see the interface of the application. And this is the quadrant data we uh, collect. Uh, here you can see, you will see data like this. These are stars. These are different uh, locations. We did our quadrant sampling. And here you can see uh, the, these points are core area. This is our study area. And these are buffer areas. These stars are buffer area. These areas are outside our study area. But we also did our biodiversity assessment outside our study area to because uh, plants stay in these areas but birds and mammals and butterflies will move out from this area to outside our study area they will come they will go so we have to access a, a, a certain portion of buffer area also so that we can uh, estimate the difference of biodiversity in our study area and outside our study area here you can see uh, you, when you will collect the data, quadrant data, it will look like that. And it will show in the map like that. So after that, you can export it in your system and do the analysis. Now, uh, these are the certain uh, things we measure after we collect our data. One is species frequency. We have to measure our species frequency. So it is nothing but a total number of sampling units by number of sampling units in which species is present. For example, if we are accessing the uh, species frequency of crows, so uh, we did 100 uh, sampling, 100 sampling in 100 different points. So total number of sampling units will be 100. Okay, number of sampling units in which species is present. But uh, we did sampling in 100 sites, but we did not found crows in all the sampling sites. We found it in 10 sampling sites, let's say. So it will be 10 and we will measure it by multiplying it by 100. What is species density? Species density is uh, nothing but total area sample by total number of individual of the species. Okay. So for species diversity, the uh, two important indexes are Simpson Diversity Index and Shannon Weiner Index. Now, I will not go to the calculation of these indexes, but I can say that for a Simpson Diversity Index, we can say it says that emphasizes species dominance and is more influenced by the presence of common species. So, we do, uh, we have to do Simpson Diversity Index to see any dominance of species present in our study area. For Shannon Winner Index, it says that places more weight on rare species, giving a broader sense of diversity that includes species, richness and evenness. So for rare species, we do Shannon Winner Index. For uh, quick biodiversity assessment, we do consider both the indexes. Now, what is species richness? Species richness is the total number of species in an area. If I explain it simply, okay. Now, here in the image, you can see richness versus diversity. Here you can see the richness is equal. Why? Because here is 12 uh, species present. Here also 12 species are present. So, richness is equal. The number of species is equal, but diversity is different. Here you can see this flower is dominating this area. This flower is present in all over the area. But in this uh, area, you can see this flower 
is present also these trees are present mm -hmm. and birds are also present in equal numbers so diversity is very good in this area but diversity is very less in this area but richness is equal by uh, seeing this picture we can uh, simply say that this flower species is dominating this area now uh, to access species evenness what is species evenness how evenly the species is present in the area like here uh, you can see in this image uh, here you can see this is b a, this a tree is present 80 percent in this area like uh, this a tree is covering mostly all of the area but in this picture you can see a trees are present b trees are also present c trees are also present in uh, good numbers so the species evenness is very high in this area but species evenness is very low in this area although the number of species are same in both the areas but here we can see all the species are evenly uh, distributed in the area so this is considered a very good biodiversity rich area now uh, there are three major types of biodiversity one is alpha biodiversity beta diversity and gamma diversity now i will explain it in my next, uh, second slide so that um, audience will have a better understanding here you can see in this picture these circles we can say is alpha diversity this area the diversity of this area will be alpha diversity there are four species present here also four species present so this will be alpha diversity of site b this will be alpha diversity of site a and site c and for beta diversity here we can see there are four species present there are also four species present but the species are different here there is a squirrel present but there is no squirrel so beta diversity will be the difference between these two sites here so the beta diversity will be two species why here you can see there are four species there are also four species but the species are different here you can see six species present but these species are different from these areas so so the beta diversity will be four species it is the difference between this site and this site and what what is the gamma diversity gamma diversity is the diversity of this whole area okay now what are the challenges we face when we do biodiversity assessment this is a very important thing we have to consider so when we do biodiversity assessment we have to take consider that on which season we are doing the assessment if, if this is a rainy season so uh, in the rainy season most of the animals do their um, uh, roosting the birds do their roosting most of the animals do their breeding in rainy season so this is not a good time to do biodiversity assessment especially in forest in rainy season so we have to take consideration of the season so this is a challenge because we have to do our assessment in specific seasons uh, sometimes we have to do assessment in different seasons to uh, compare the data present in the area in different seasons seasonal variance we say that lack of comprehensive data like uh, many species remain undocumented like especially in tropical areas there are many species present which are uh, undocumented so when we do uh, sampling in areas we find species but we cannot identify the species so we cannot include the species in our data now there are uh, certain sampling limitations also like unaccessible terrains unaccessible areas water bodies uh, rivers which are inaccessible to do assessment there are human wildlife conflict also if there is a carnivorous animal present in the forest we cannot uh, go simply go to the forest and do our assessment we have to take certain steps uh, we have to implement camera traps in the forest and we have to wait for the animal to come 
so that the trap camera can capture the images of the animal then after uh, a period of time uh, it takes uh, 6 to 8 months mostly to at least see that the animal is present in the area or not so these are certain challenges we face and uh, there is one uh, more uh, thing uh, like i can i want to conclude is that when we do biodiversity assessment first thing first we have to uh, know that what is the importance of doing biodiversity assessment in this area like wh why i am doing biodiversity assessment is it for um, to access simply the uh, species present the flora and fauna present in the area so that i can um, gain knowledge from it or i am planning to do a certain project like if i am planning to do a mining project in the area so that i know that mining will uh, create dust in the area it will create noises sound noises in the area so this will impact the existing biodiversity present in the area so what are the precautions we can take we can take uh, precautions like we can plant uh, dense trees surrounding our project site so that the sound will be filtered so that uh, the dust particles will be filtered it will be captured by the trees so these are the mitigation strategies we have to can consider but first of all we have to assess the biodiversity of that area so that we can plan what will be our mitigating strategies in this challenges okay so thank you everyone uh, for uh, considering me to explain what is biodiversity assessment i know i do not know much about biodiversity assessment but i am happy to share what i know and if you have any questions or if you have any queries or if you want to add certain points in this lecture you can uh, happily comment down and we will see your comments and we will reply accordingly thank you